Last week, global health donors, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the World Bank, and UNICEF pledged $600 million towards eradicating cervical cancer. Every two minutes, a woman dies of cervical cancer, and that's more than 300,000 deaths per year, according to CervicalCancerAction.org. And more than 90% of these deaths are in low- and middle-income countries. However, with expanded screening, treatment, and vaccination, experts believe cervical cancer can be completely eliminated. Dr. Nidhi Kumar is on call to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. So how common is cervical cancer in the U.S. and um, who is at greatest risk? Well, according to the American Cancer Society, over 13,000 women will be diagnosed with cervical cancer this year. 4,000 of those women will die. Um, cervical cancer is often diagnosed in women in their 30s and 40s, but it can also affect older women mm. in their 60s and 70s. So it's so important to keep up with those regular gynecologic exams. Now, in terms of who is at risk, any woman who has had at least one sexual partner could have come in contact with HIV, H HPV infection, and that puts you at risk for cervical cancer. So what is the connection between HPV and cervical cancer? Well, 99% of all cervical cancers are caused by HPV infection. It is the most common sexually transmitted disease in the United States. Eight out of every 10 women have been exposed to it. But for the overwhelming majority of women, they're asymptomatic and they clear the infection on their own. But there is a small percentage of women that will continue to have inflammation in the cervix, which leads to precancerous cells and then cervical cancer. And that, again, is why screening is so very important. And how does the HPV vaccine work and, and who's eligible for it? Well, the HPV vaccine triggers your body to recognize the infection and mount an immune response if exposed to HPV. It is safe is there are minimal side effects and it reduces your risk of cervical cancer anywhere from 97 to wow. 100%. But here's the key, you want to get vaccinated before you become sexually active. Mm -hmm. Now, it has been recommended by the uh, CDC for preteens, the FDA has approved it for uh, young girls age nine, through women age 45. So it is mo most effective before becoming sexually active, but can be affected in later years as well. Right, I'm sure a lot of folks are like, that's a little early, but you know what, that's... Well, it's interesting that you say that mm -hmm. because there's this hesitancy mm -hmm. and the vaccination rates are very low because I think parents look at it as a vaccine that prevents sexually transmitted infection, but really this is a vaccine that prevents cancer. Exactly, right. So what else do women, um, can they do to minimize the chances of cervical cancer? Well, I said it over and over again. You really want to keep up with those regular GYN exams, getting pap smears, keep your immune system up, but then lifestyle choices make a big impact here. You know, women who smoke have two times increased risk of getting cervical cancer. Mm. Having multiple sexual partners increases your risk. Untreated chlamydia infection, um, using condoms can reduce your risk it's not a hundred percent so making those good lifestyle choices and get vaccinated there you go so many things we can do dr nitty kumar thank you so much really thank appreciate you. it and remember you can catch dr kumar's reports every monday at 7 15 a.m